If you're looking for mutt coins to upgrade your mutt game, go to GameRusher.com for cheap and safe mutt coins. You can use my discount code HUB, H-U-B, at the website. Use the first link in the description down below and get that upgrade to your game. Yo, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's your boy Kush back at it again with another Giants video. Real quick, first things first, I got a new skit out called Giants fans after the win against the Philadelphia Eagles. My opinion is pretty funny. It's the first skit I've done in a while, you know, using those better cameras that you guys were used to in the beginning. Uh, you know, at the beginning of me making those skits before uh, COVID rose again. Uh, it's from my boy Farhan. He's who I get the cameras from. Uh, but good news, I got my new phone today, so even when I switch back from that, the quality should be better than before. So with that out of the way, miscellaneous stuff out of the way, let's talk about the Giants right now. We're on our bye week. It's a relatively quiet bye week. I know that sounds weird because we had the DeAndre Baker stuff, but technically it's not Giants news anymore because, you know, he signed with the Chiefs. I guess the only Giants related thing was that he, he was innocent, but any... I, I, I guess what I'm going to say is that anybody could have told that judge probably want to re-sign him. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was the general consensus, and that's what ended up happening. Uh, we, we, of course, had the big news, you know, that I, I already covered with Dave D. Guglielmo. I'm going to just call him Coach Googs, being our new offensive line coach after the firing of Mark Colombo. But then, that even that wasn't really that big news when we got the full story of, you know, it turns out Judge was doing most of the coaching anyway. And so then, this was just a really you know sensible move from joe judge and it was really uh honestly a great thing that happened during the bye week because now there's actually time to adjust somewhat i mean other than that not really much news you know the bye week is coming to a close here so i want to talk about how a couple of giants players graded out at the first half of the season technically the first half of the Giants season because half of the season would have been at week eight but you know we're on our bye week so we're gonna look at it as first half and second half this is from pff and you guys know how i look at pff i say it all the time i respect them their stats are you know better you know the best out there bar none pff looks at every single game every single snap of every single player nobody else does that they're the only people that have the time to do that so their stats are the best bar none it's how they interpret that stats you know those stats that's where i get a little iffy with them and one of the ways that they interpret that those stats are by giving players overall grades that's the interpretation of all the stats that they collect i have no idea what the formula is but this is what we're going to talk about here this is up on giants.com the our players are actually doing pretty well and one of them that i think would be doing better than you expected is daniel jones Daniel Jones somehow, some way, ranks fifth in the NFL in passing grade on throws 10 yards plus down the field, trailing just Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, Tom Brady, and Patrick Mahomes. According to PFF, when throwing the ball 10 yards down the field or more with a clean pocket, Jones has a 74.5 adjusted completion percentage, is the highest in the NFL by almost 5 percentage points. And I'm not done with Daniel Jones here too. He, on, he earned a 78.8 overall grade through 10 games. That's the 12th highest quarterback grade in the entire NFL. This is their overall grade. So per PFF, Daniel Jones is the 12th best quarterback in the league. That is crazy. That is absolutely crazy. I don't think anybody expected that. You, you talk about how he has the highest, you know, percentage when thrown down the field. And now he's also the 12th highest graded quarterback. When you look back at it, even as Giants fans, I'm like, there's no way Daniel Jones is the 12th highest graded quarterback on the 2020 year. He's probably maybe like number 18, 19 or 20th or somewhere down there. But 12th? I wasn't expecting that at any time during the year. And I think maybe none of you guys were expecting that either. But is now this begs the question, once again, this is PFF's interpretation of their stats. We don't have all their stats. We have just this right here. What do you guys take away from this? Does this tell you that DJ is better than we think? Or does it tell you that this is just another PFF stat? I wouldn't put too much stock into it. Which you could say for every, you know, every other thing I have from this Giants.com article. Because the next player up is James Bradbury. And I think we could all agree that James Bradbury is one of the best cornerbacks in the NFL. In my personal opinion, he is the best man cover cornerback in the NFL right now. Overall, he's two or three. I, I think James Bradbury is that good. 
This is what PFF has on him. He has forced the most incompletions by any cornerback with 14 and ranks fifth in the NFL in yards allowed per covered snap played at the outside cornerback. His 74.2 overall grade is the 14th highest among the league's corners, supported by his 75.0 coverage grade. So I definitely think he's better than being the 14th overall cornerback in the league. Once again, I think he's either number two or number three. There's really only two dudes I could put above, above him. That's uh, Stephon Gilmore and J Jair Alexander. Although I will say another Patriot is definitely making his name. He's been doing it for a while now, but he's this, this is the season that he's getting noticed. JC Jackson, but Bradbury at the very least, in my opinion, is a top five corner. And once again, put in the comments down below, what do you guys take away from this PFF grade? The next man up is Blake Martinez. Of course, y'all know I'm a big Blake Martinez fan, and it gets annoying. I know it gets annoying sometimes that I always say that, oh, I'm the one who said he was going to be good. It's You know why I do that, guys? It's, it's probably one of the only things that I got right. <laughs> you know, I, I put out so many videos, so many ideas and, you know, predictions and whatnot. I'm bound to get like 90% of them wrong. I'm a fan just like y'all. So Blake Martinez, he's actually tied with Chicago's Roquan Smith for the league lead with 96 combined tackles, has the eighth highest overall grade among the league's best linebackers um, at 75.9. He also has balanced production this season with 75.6 run defense grade and a 72.9 coverage grade. Now, this is right up there with, with where I think Blake Martinez is. You know, even when I get hype about him, I say he's top five. But more realistically, he's probably top 10 inside linebacker. And I would say this grades out right about where he is. Like, to be up there with somebody like Roquan Smith, that's definitely good. I mean, Blake, he's no stranger to leading the league in tackles. He's always been one of the best run stuffing and best tackling linebackers in the league. This is just finally one of the years that he's got to show his coverage chops as well and that he's gotten to really be a legit leader and legit star on a defense, which he's never really quite been over at Green Bay. And so it's getting noticed more. And with the improved snaps, with a scheme that does help him out, He's really coming to his own as one of the league's best linebackers. I think around that eighth spot is definitely where he sits. You know, you talk about guys like Fred Warner, Bobby Wagner, Roquan, who they mentioned. These guys are definitely ahead of him. But I think Blake is stepping up to the plate here. Uh, next up, we got our boys Dexter Lawrence and Leonard Williams. Uh, this is what Giants.com says. They're both enjoying solid starts to their seasons. Lawrence ranks 16th among interior defensive linemen with his 72.8 overall grade, which includes a 73.5 pass rush grade and a 72.1 run defense grade. Williams ranks right behind Lawrence with a 78.1 overall grade, held by his elite 80.1 run defense grade. So you're talking about a 0.1 difference there, and I am, I'm actually surprised that Dexter is ahead of Leonard. I will put that to the fact that I think Leonard takes a lot more snaps than Dexter. I don't have that pulled up right now, but honestly, I think that is how it is because uh, they rotate Dexter and Dalvin Thompson out there sometimes. It's only in the past couple of weeks that we've really been seeing the three big boys out there at the same time. But I will say, I think any, I want to say objective Giants fan can admit that Leonard Williams is balling out this season. Leonard Williams is having his best season in his career so far. He's on pace to have the most sacks in his career, on pace to have the most pressures, most quarterback hits as a pass rusher, and he's on pace to have his best career as a run defender as well. So, hey, Leonard Williams is definitely, in my opinion, a top five defensive tackle in the league, which I think is what they listen to him as, and definitely, I mean, I'm um, top 15, not top five. <laughs> that slipped out. Top 15. I'm correcting myself. And definitely, you know, a top 15, 3-4 defensive end in the league as well. And, and speaking of which, Dexter Lawrence, he's performing up to standard. And I say that because coming off his great rookie season, we all expected him to have a great second year. And he's definitely building off that as well. I'm surprised that Giants.com did not mention uh, Dalvin Thomason, who I mentioned earlier. It seems he's, he's even underrated by the organization's website itself because Dalvin Thomason is also having a great year. Don't let that slip by you. He's having his career best year in pass rushing and run stuffing as well. All three of these guys, hey man, it's part of the reason I want to keep that trio together at almost any cost. Like, I really don't want to break them up. I don't want to choose Williams over Dalvin or choose Dalvin over Williams. I want to keep them together because they make that defense elite in my opinion especially when we would get some edge rushing potential whenever carter comes back next year you know what i'm saying or if we get another edge rusher in free agency or in the draft 
I want to keep these guys together. And speaking of which, all the defensive players I just mentioned, they should all be up for a Pro Bowl nod. Now, we all know how the Pro Bowl works. It's a popularity vote, it is, which is why I encourage you guys to go out there and vote. I've already voted over 20 times because you're allowed to vote unlimited amount of times to get these guys in there. They've earned it. You know, James Bradbury, Blake Martinez, our entire defensive line, Lawrence, Williams, and Tomlinson, our special teams, um, Graham Gano, even Riley Dixon, the punter, who's looking great, and Casey Crater, our new long snapper. All these guys I just mentioned are having Pro Bowl worthy seasons. Now all of them are not gonna get in just because once again, it's a popularity contest, but you know, try your best and get them in. They definitely deserve it. And and speaking of the special teams, you know, there, there's a mention here, Graham Gano, he has an impressive 82.8 .8 grade on the field, 21 of 22 field goals, extra points 16 of 16. His 21 made goals are tied with Atlanta's Young Hao Koo for the league lead. And in my opinion, he's better than Young Hao Koo because he has, He's just better, man. He's Graham the Goat Gano. He's Godfather Gano. He's the god -o -matic. You know what I'm saying? Get that man in there as well. But that's what I want to talk to y'all to today about. Once again, quiet week since the Dave G news. Uh, let me know what you think. Get these guys in there. And who are you most impressed by thus far in the season? Put your comments down below. I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.